Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Morrow First United Methodist Church this November 28th, 2021, the first Sunday of Advent for this year. We want to welcome everyone who's visiting with us in the sanctuary this morning, as well as those who may be watching us online on YouTube. If you are visiting as a guest with us today, we ask that you would let us know about your visit by completing one of the visitor cards you'll find in the pew pocket in front of you and leave it in the offering plate. If you're viewing online, please say hi and chat during the service if you're watching live or let us know later about your visit at mfumc.com slash guest. As we continue to fight this COVID with a new variant showing up again starting this week, uh, we want to remind you to love your neighbor, continue to wear your masks uh, when appropriate, maintain social distancing when appropriate, and get vaccinated. We want to remind you about the Morrow First UMC mobile app. If you haven't received it already, uh, you can download, download that to your app, uh, phone or tablet. Uh, you can find the most recent news updates there, but it does not replace the Morrow Mirror, which contains uh, more information than is on the app every week. Uh, if you're having trouble uh, downloading the app or operating it, you can contact Cora in the office and she can help you. We have an announcement from the food pantry this morning. We didn't serve anybody this week. It was closed due to uh, Thanksgiving, but uh, Diana has found that she can't order hams by the case, uh, which they distribute before Christmas because of the COVID uh, situation. She needs 12 more three pound Hormel canned hams, uh, and she has found that Kroger has them for $9.99 each. There's no limit on how many you can get. If you need reimbursement, save your receipt and turn it into Becky. She needs them by December 7th, which is next Tuesday. Are there any other announcements from the congregation? Let us worship God. If you would please stand as you're able for our invocation. Let us pray. Righteous one, to you alone we lift our souls. In you alone we place our trust. For you alone we wait all day long. For you are the God of our salvation, abounding in mercy and steadfast love. Help us remain alert and watchful for the coming of your promised one, the one who comes with power and glory, the one drawing near to bring our salvation. Amen. You may be seated. It's time for our children's moment, um, but I don't see our, okay. Uh, come meet with Miss Anna on the steps. Good morning. Good morning, all you beautiful children. Did you notice something different in the sanctuary? Yeah, just kidding, y'all didn't because you put it up, didn't you? <laughs> All right, so we definitely have some different things in the sanctuary, which you dragged out of the closet and you hung and you had us yell at you to put the right number of ornaments on or not to put them on the back or, you know, all those sorts of things. And today is the hanging of the greens service because it's all a part of Advent. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't use the word Christmas, did I? At home, I bet your moms are yelling at you or your dads are yelling at you to hang the ornaments right on the Christmas tree, right? Yeah, well, we did yesterday. That's, that's, the, that's the spirit of Christmas, isn't it? But <laughs> anyway, but today we are celebrating the first Sunday of Advent, which you get to learn a little Latin. You ready? Ooh, Advent comes from the word adventus. Ooh, that's pretty, that's pretty fun, isn't it? It means arrival because during Advent we're waiting on the arrival of the little little dude we hide in the nativity Jesus that's right remember every anytime somebody pauses during children's sermon it's always 
Jesus or God. That's always the answer. All right, excellent. So, <laughs> so we're preparing for Jesus to arrive. Now, there are some people in this world who do a lot of preparation. Like everything is covered, every little piece, every thought, everything that could go wrong, they prepare. And then there are some people who don't. But it doesn't matter whether we hang our greens perfectly, whether we sing our songs perfectly. God doesn't care. He doesn't care whether we are perfect, whether our preparations have checklist and to-do list. He doesn't care. All he cares about is that you prepare one thing. Now, this is a change. It's not Jesus or God. He cares that you prepare one thing in your body for the arrival of Jesus. And what's that? Heart. Your heart in love. Exactly. So in all the preparations and all the checklists that I love to do, I also have to remember to prepare my heart. And we do as well when we're here at church and when we are working and talking with other people in the world. Prepare not just your houses, not just your, your decorations, your trees, but let's try to remember to prepare our heart for the arrival of Jesus. Can we say a quick prayer? Dear God, thank you for Advent. Thank you for the arrival and the preparations we make for Advent. Help to prepare our hearts every day in Advent. Amen. Before we go to our pastoral prayer, we've had several requests written in the prayer books, and some are left from last Sunday. They weren't uh, picked up. But from Anita Thomaston, uh, she asks that we pray for Janet Thomaston, had total hip replacement, uh, I guess a week ago now, at Henry Piedmont Hospital. Uh, Nancy Thomaston Rogers had surgery last Friday for a kidney stone. Uh, and her daughter, Adrian's husband, Chris's grandmother, aged 90, has been diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh, her sister-in-law, Joanne Thomaston, had surgery to replace an artery in her leg and is doing well. We want to add uh, Karen and Paul Kelly. Uh, they woke up with food poisoning this morning, so we pray for their recovery. I'd like to add my brother Bruce Jewett uh, to the list. He's been diagnosed with liver cancer and will begin uh, some experimental treatment uh, this coming week. Uh, my nephew, Nick Swindell, who suffers from severe complications from diabetes, recently had bypass surgery, has had some amputations, and is a, on a kidney transplant list. And my nephew-in-law, Michael Carter, just yesterday uh, got out of ICU in a hospital in Massachusetts suffering from COVID and pneumonia. So I ask that you would add all of those to your lists. Thank you, uh, as we join together in prayer. I'd like to remind you that there are prayer requests that are in on our website, on our more, in our Moral Mayor, and on the app. If you have a request that you would like us to list, uh, please feel free to, there is a drop-down box that you can write your prayer or you can call the church office and we will make sure that those who you um, ask to be in prayer, that we will pray for them fervently. We have a prayer team here and so we just want you to know that um, we have you in our prayers. If you don't want your prayers listed but you still want uh, the pastor and the prayer team to know you can also still call the church office and that will be given to us. So praise God for the greatest gift we can have and that is prayer. Let us pray. Emmanuel, God with us. In this Advent season, we celebrate that you are not hidden from us in some distant cloud, but you choose to be with us in the mystery of our everyday lives. We turn to you, almighty God, this season and pray that you would birth joy and healing, blessing and hope in all your people and all those who call you their Lord and Savior. Let something wonderful begin in each one of us. May, you, may your hands be given 
upon us to fill us and to restore us and to give us the joy, to give us the overwhelming love that helps to extend that love to others. Loving God, at this time of Advent, we confess that we are often distracted by all the different things that happen during this season, the busyness, the stress of commitments, the stress of getting it right and perfect. But because of you, almighty God, help us to turn our eyes and focus on you, on your coming, on your second coming, on your coming in our lives in a new and a mighty way. We pray for those, almighty God, that during this season may be a very hard time for them because they have lost a loved one. They are suffering financially, spiritually, physically, in some ways, and they are just asking, Lord, for your hands to be upon them and for us to continue to intercede for them and for one another. We thank you for the joy, the great joy, and the love and the hope that you bring this season. Forgive us, Almighty God, for all the ways that we go astray. Forgive us, Almighty God, when we don't recognize the true beauty of each season, each day that you have given us. And let us see the sparkle of light in any darkness that we may be surrounded by, in any confusion that may come, so that we can know that we can count on you to be the source of our light, our strength, our hope, and our love in this joyful season of Advent. In Christ we pray, amen. We come to the part of our service where we thank you for your continued support of our ministries here at Morrow First and remind you that there are several ways that you can give. You can give online at Morrow First UMC uh, slash give or through the MU MFUMC app. Uh, you can mail it to Post Office Box 143, Morrow, Georgia, 30260. You can deliver it to the office uh, Monday through Thursday until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Or if you're here with us in person, uh, you can drop it into the offering plates, either at the front or rear of the sanctuary as you come in or leave. Let us go to our Lord in prayer. Holy God of new beginnings, as we share our tithes and offerings with you, we are filled with hope. We enter the season of Advent with expectation. We have left behind us a time of fear, isolation, and uncertainty. And we raise our heads because we know our redemption is coming near. May our gifts be dedicated to help heal the brokenness of our world and to welcome our Messiah into the world once again. In Christ we pray. Amen. This first Sunday of Advent, we present a series of scriptures from the Old Testament and New Testament, followed by hymns as acts of worship in the hanging of the greens. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of the King? With branches of cedar, the tree of royalty. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of the eternal Christ. With garlands of pine and fir, whose leaves are ever living, ever green. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of our Savior? With wreaths of holly and ivy, telling of his passion, death, and resurrection. How shall we prepare our hearts for the coming of the Son of God? For God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Glory to God in the highest. Sing. 
cedar branch, God will send a righteous king. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is in the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Jeremiah 23, 5 through 6. In ancient times, the cedar was revered as the tree of royalty. It also signified immortality and used for purification. We place the cedar branch as a sign of Christ, who reigns as king forever, and whose coming in justice and righteousness will purify our hearts. Words from the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has arrived. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Isaiah 9, 2, verses 6 through 7. Because the needles of the pine and fir trees appear not to die each season, the ancients saw them as signs of things that last forever. Isaiah tells us there will be no end to the reign of the Messiah. Therefore, we hang this wreath of evergreens shaped in a circle, which itself has no end, to signify the eternal reign of Jesus the Christ. The fourth servant song, the holly and the ivy. Further word from Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 1 through 6. Who has believed what we have heard, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. For Christians, this passage from Isaiah reflects the sufferings of Jesus who saved us from our sins by his death on the cross and by his resurrection from the dead. In ancient times, holly and ivy were considered signs of Christ's passion. Their prickly leaves suggested the crown of thorns, the red berries the blood of the Savior, and the bitter bark the drink offered to Jesus on the cross. As we hang holly and ivy, let us rejoice in the coming of Jesus our Savior. The mystery of the incarnation, the light of the chrisman tree. 
we hear the words from the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. As we prepare for the coming of Jesus, the light of the world, we light the Christmon tree. During this Advent, wherever you see a lighted Christmas tree, let it call to mind the one who brings light to our darkness, healing to our brokenness, and peace to all who receive him. And when the goodness and love and kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And that's Titus 3, verses 4 through 7. Holy Lord, we come with joy to celebrate the birth of your Son who rescued us from darkness of sin by making the cross a tree of life and light. May this tree, arrayed in splendor, remind us of the life-giving cross of Christ, that we may always rejoice in the new life that shines in our hearts. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Advent wreath. The Advent wreath is a circle of evergreen branches, a sign of life without end. It is the circular wreath with five candles, four around the wreath and one in the center, representing the Christ candle. The circle of the wreath reminds us of God, God's eternity and endless mercy which has no beginning or end. The green in the reef speaks of the hope that we have in God, the hope of newness, of renewal and life. Candles symbolize the life of God coming into the world through the birth of God's son, Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world that comes into the world into the darkness of our lives to bring newness, life, and hope. Christ came to bring us salvation and has promised to come again. Let us pray that we will always be ready to welcome him. Come, Lord Jesus. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of the king? Come, Lord Jesus that the keeping of Advent may open our hearts to God's love. Come, Lord Jesus. That the light of Christ may penetrate the darkness of sin. Come, Come Lord Jesus. That this wreath may constantly remind us to prepare for the coming of Christ. Come, Come Lord Jesus. That the Christmas season may fill us with peace and joy as we strive to follow the example of Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. 
loving God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessing upon us. We light the candles of this wreath. May we light, may their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Our hope. May the light sent from God shine in the darkness to show us the way of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Go forth in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all this Advent season. Amen? Amen. Amen.